What's up and welcome back to the Point Man Podcast. Uh, this is episode 11. Uh, we have crossed the double digits. We're eventually going to quit counting and just call them podcast episodes, but I don't know when. Um, but my name's Zach. I'm here with Luke. Today, it's just the two of us rocking and rolling. Thank you. Um, hunting season has fallen upon Arkansas, oh. and therefore... It just leaves us non-hunters. Well, yeah, it's a good thing. I don't hunt. You don't hunt. We don't care about hunting. Yeah. So everybody else hilarious. is hunting today, but eventually they'll be back. Yeah. So it would give us a good opportunity to have some fun guests on over the next few weeks and, yeah. and see what we can get into, what we can talk about. We miss you, Shane. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see how this goes. You may get fired. <laughs> not showing up to work. How do you get fired on your day off? <laughs> So we are we are wrapping up our series, A Real Conversation About Sex. If you haven't joined us, um, there's an opportunity you can go back and check out all of the weeks. So we'll be on YouTube. Uh, by the time this comes out, we should have all weeks on there, I believe. Um, and it's, it's been an incredible semester. It's been an awesome topic to dive into. Uh, we've talked about what God's Word says about sex. We've been a little controversial on what the world's got going on with sex. Um, we've even talked brain science, and we've talked about what's going on inside the brain when you view pornography and those types of things. And so it's been an awesome semester. If you haven't checked that out, hit the videos and watch them uh, and get caught up on that because it's a pretty, it's been a pretty cool conversation. I've had great conversations with just men in general yeah. uh, during the semester nights and just on Sundays milling around. Uh, and guys are thinking about it, and they're, they're, they're taking stock of their own life and what's going on. And... Uh, how they can kind of walk in freedom from sexual sin and impurity. Yeah, it's been really good. Uh, a lot of people have been, a lot of men have been more vulnerable, I yeah, believe. Uh, 100%. Just, just speaking to like my family members or people who have attended um, our, our services, they've been like super vulnerable and open about like stuff that they've gone on in their past sins that they're trying to recover from. And just being more open and vulnerable, I think that's identifying the issue is something that's going to lead to overcoming that issue. Yeah, I love this. Uh, Tim Ross is a previous pastor and podcaster now and i've heard a few other pastors say this it's that hot humble open and transparent <laughs> yeah. but i mean it's, seriously it's yeah. guys are terrible about being honest with uh, themselves first but then honest with the people in their life and this semester has honestly it's almost made it impossible to not be honest with yourself sure. the way we've discussed these things and and kind of gone through scripture and we've gone through society's looks and things like that it's hard to not say Oh, I've got something going on. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's extremely tough. I mean, even for me, are you thinking about sins in your past? You're like, you don't want anybody to know. Mm -hmm. And like, you try to cover that up. I mean, it's super hard for me to even discuss that stuff. And I'm sure it's just as difficult for every other man that comes to an appointment and to be open and vulnerable. So I think it's an amazing thing. Yeah, it is. And I, I'm, I'm excited that uh, we've got to do it. I'm excited our church is willing to tackle tough topics like sex, like porn, sure. um, in not a churchy way, but in a very direct and we're going to talk about it and we're going to discuss what's going on here's some resources that's how we're going to overcome it and this is some bible verses that'll get you through it so yeah i had uh, my youngest son who is way too young to understand what sex is <laughs> yeah. but i was walking through the lobby with him this morning and somebody goes oh you got to go to kids ministry today because we're talking about sex in church <laughs> and i was like he's going to kids i was like but in our house we talk about it with no. our kids sure. <laughs> it's like a very open and honest conversation like i don't have a I don't have an age where I'm like, oh, this is when we're going to start talking about it. I, I was, it's a conversation pretty generally in our house. I was thinking about that this morning because uh, Kendall was actually preaching at our service this, uh, today at Sher Sherwood, and he was talking about, like, you know, sometimes you have that conversation between your dad and the wife, and they talk to the kid yeah. at a whatever age, and I'm like... They called it an Oco Taco conversation oh, in our <laughs> in, ours, in the I, early service. And I got to, like, I haven't even, like, it just hit me, like, Reese turned three, so, I mean, yeah. got, probably got a little bit, but it's like, oh, man, I got to have those conversations. But, like, like he was saying, like, it's a it's a lifelong talk with your kids, and, uh, and as they're growing up, you're they're molding them, shaping them, helping them um, grow their relationship with God, so it's something that... I got to think about here pretty soon. Yeah, but I mean, it, in today's world, yeah. somebody's going to tell them about it. Right. Whether you're going to tell them or they're going to see it at school yeah. or, you know, whatever. And it's, look, it's not even controversial. If you look at the news and you see all of these crazy things that are going on, all the schools that are having lawsuits against one another, yeah. um, all of the the story times and all of these things that we see yeah. uh, going on in society. Right. These are not like teenagers that they're having these conversations right. with. I mean, we're talking about 
kids a lot of time um and that's not what we're talking about today nope. but, <laughs> but i just thought it was you know there's not a, a time period to to that i think that you start talking to your kid about it. like you say it's yep. kind of a a lifelong conversation one of my hopes is that through the semester and through guys becoming more hum- honest and open mm-hmm. humble honest and open transparent with their 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 issues and their what they're dealing with that they'll be more open and honest with their kids and yep. that they'll be able to raise the next generation to have a different perspective on sex and a different way they interact with it yeah so me and jc were talking about this morning uh we have our our two young kids and about like what what are we nervous about what do we have anxiety about yeah. and uh, one of the things the main things is our kids and how to raise them right and how to um lead them the way we're supposed to lead them so that's one of the kind of the things that got me thinking about our topic for today yeah and we're talking about anxiety uh, which i think is a a, a solid extension again this week of of the conversations yep. we've been having because men have anxiety uh, one of the questions that was asked during the semester was you know if i tell people this i might lose credibility everything yeah like i might lose my job my wife mm-hmm. my family sure. like i might lose everything if i'm mm-hmm. honest with this issue and there's clearly an anxious tone to the way the question was asked and the way it was posed. Um, so anxiety is part of this and uh, not just this, but in life in general, people deal with stuff. Um, it's a, it's a tough world to live in and there's a lot going on. And so anxiety is a hundred percent going to be part of our daily life. Yeah, for sure. So it's an issue. Jesus says in this world, you will have trials and tribulations, but take heart because I have overcome the world. So Mm. there's there's no, there's no way that anyone's out there listening to this. Like, Oh, I don't have any anxiety. I don't have any, I don't have any worries out there in, yeah. in your life because everybody has them. Jesus says you will have them. Yeah. And so there's a couple of maybe antidotes or a couple of verses that we can kind of dive in today. Um, speaking from personal experience, I have, a, I would say I'm an overcome, uh, overcomer from uh, extreme uh, anxiety and extreme worry because mm-hmm. I used to just be riddled with it. Um, I say I come from like a long line of worriers. My dad yeah. will say the same thing is like he's had a, a really bad anxiety and worry um, as we were growing up. I had I didn't really notice, but some, like um, there was actually this one one time my dad was like, I think I might be having a heart attack when I was a kid, and we we're like, oh gosh, so scary. Mm-hmm. Like what is going on? He, he went to the doctor, and ended up it was just really bad anxiety. Exactly. Really, he had just kind of like an anxiety attack. Do you think there's? Uh, I, I was thinking about this uh, <laughs> earlier. Is there two forms? I think of two forms of anxiety when I think about this. I think of the anxiety of the things that I cannot control and then the anxiety because I want to control everything. Yes, I, I would 100% And I may have just said the same thing twice. but <laughs> No, I don't think so. I think you're right. Um, you're extremely worried about things that are out of your power and I think that's kind of the really, the really bad and the really hurtful um, anxiety that can actually cripple you and make mm-hmm. you um, fold under the pressure and the things that like, I can't control these things so I'm just going to let them run, ruin me. It's like, that's not something you need to worry about. Yeah. Like thinking about kids and yeah. when you're raising your kids, I have young kids, I have old kids and it's, you know, <laughs> there's like, my kids started driving, uh, <laughs> two years ago, two summers ago, yeah. last summer. I don't know. It's been a little while now, but you know, that first time you turn them loose, it's like, I know he's a terrible driver. Like I'm anxious for him yeah. and for everybody else in Especially. society. The uh, state has said he can drive. <laughs> They've given him a clean bill yeah. to get behind the wheel and drive this car. Yeah. But like, you're, you're terrified for a long time of like, you know, are they gonna make it? Are yeah. they gonna be back? <laughs> and uh, I mean, you think about it too. Whenever you have your, whenever you first get your driver's license, and you're out there for the first time on the road, how terrified you are. Yeah. Whenever you're first driving, you're like, do I know all the rules? Yeah. <laughs> Am I gonna come up to a, a spot in the road where I'm like, I don't know what to do here? I mean, I feel like that's just another. No, I think anxiety. it's so true too, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, another way I was thinking about it is like, mm. if I. It, I if I'm at work, mm-hmm. did I get all my work done? Am I anxious mm-hmm. about like, am I competent enough yep. to complete this task? Mm-hmm. Am I, um, you begin to worry and you become anxious about like, Oh, I don't know if I can meet this deadline. I don't know if that's possible. Yep. This is like, it's in your control kind of, but it's not in your control right. either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I say all that to say that I think that anxiety hits every man, but it hits them from different directions and different perspectives at different times. Yes. Yeah, so I have a, um, so I was going to, I was kind of kind of dive through this, um, the being be the beginning mm-hmm. uh, when you start worrying and I kind of have like a story kind of like, um, whenever I was a kid, I feel like I was ext- like, I don't know. I don't know how, what age people start thinking about it, but thinking about like death. Mm. And, um, whenever I was probably like eight, maybe eight or nine, I don't really mean somewhere around that time frame, I was just like laying in bed and I like, I'm going to die. one day. <laughs> And I feel like that's something that 
it's kind of I don't know if it's like instilled in us, but I I heard one of my coworkers on that week this at this week he said that they they went and watched the Barbie movie. I don't know if you've seen that no, or not. I haven't seen it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But uh, at one point, she talks about like, this is a man podcast. <laughs> I'm watching Barbie. I, I had to watch it because my wife, my <laughs> wife made me go watch it. She was like, "We're watching this, and it comes out good movie." Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but uh, talking about the Barbie, she said she was going to die one day, and that my friend at work said my daughter watched that almost the same age as I was whenever I watched that, yeah. and that she came home just terrified that she was going to die mm. one day. And I, I really felt bad for him, and I really, um, I really had like sadness because he couldn't he, he's not a church goer not that i know of and he's not a christian not that i know of and i was like man I, I, I feel really sad and really bad for you but i know like if that does happen to me if it did happen to me and if it does happen to my children that i can have that confidence to say hey i, I got a i got a bible verse for you that yeah. we don't have to worry about that and so this is one of the verse bible verses that i was going to bring up today as romans 10 9 through 10 i don't know if um i, I don't have it pulled up right now but it just the wages of sin is death and then the gift free gift of life is eternal life so it's like we don't have to worry about it whenever we die because we're going to go to heaven right. and that's something that i really struggled with when i was a kid and started really young about you know trying to overcome that scare it's just being terrified as a kid so yeah there's a, a rap song by kb who is a christian rapper yep and uh oh i found that really quick i never can find this lyric <laughs> But it always cracks me up. It's Pull very up. along the same line. It said, me, me and Amin was preaching the king. This dude aggrieved and pulled out his weapon. Amin looked over at me and said, we ain't been to leave. Like, what they going to do? Send us to heaven? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um, so here it is, Romans 10, 9 through 10. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you have been saved. And so if it, all the worst that could happen, is you die and go to paradise. My dad says that a lot too. And it's like, what they going to send us to heaven? <laughs> you send us to heaven. Exactly. <laughs> so I just, I know I felt bad for him and I wanted to be like, man, I guess it kind of instilled in me is like one day, whenever my kids are having that same thoughts about death or whatever, it's, it's struggling with them. I can say, Hey, one day we're all going to hang yeah. out one day. So that's something that you can think about. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a, a, a underlying tone of, I love metal music. Um, like just hard heavy fast metal music and there's a ton of artists that have an underlying tone of this like hopelessness and anxiety and like you can just feel it and hear it in the lyrics and the things that they're saying like what well, why this why that and a lot of it stems from the fact they don't have a relationship with jesus they don't have a connection to an afterlife that they can be confident in <laughs> And so they find themselves and they find these lyrics that are just like, I mean, they're clearly just sad people. Mm, yeah. Like I hear them. And I'm like, Oh Lord, <laughs> I got the answer boss. Like, <laughs> Yo, hit me up. I got you. <laughs> give me a shout. Like yeah. we can, I can answer all of these things that you're talking about, yeah, for sure. you know? And it's, yeah, death's an interesting one. You know, where as, as humans, we are very clearly understanding of our mortality. We yeah. know we die. Right. And if you don't think you're going to die, you're just sadly mistaken for sure. And, so we live our whole life understanding that one day it's just going to go lights out yep. and it's a crazy thing right thankfully we understand what happens on the other side exactly. of that lights yeah. out but right. it still is just a crazy thought and i'm sure for a kid oh, yeah. um oh i mean golly think as a parent who doesn't have that relationship like you say that yeah. is crazy right um yeah wow mm, so, hopelessness and that anxiety and so kind of from that moment until like maybe my early i mean i still have anxiety to this day we mm -hmm. have to fight it every day but it was really bad maybe between that age and like 22 23 um time yeah. frame i was like extremely grip, uh, gripped with anxiety about like i mean just whatever you're in that in that moment in your life um as you're growing up through teenage years, you just have anxiety about school or looking mm -hmm. cool or having a girlfriend or whatever the case may be. And um, I would just be like, really not be able to complete my task because I was just worried or I can't go to yeah. sleep at night, just laying in your bed, just worried or anxious about what's going to happen. I left a uh, graduation when I was a senior in high school, <laughs> not like my main graduation. We had like a athlete's graduation. I wasn't smart enough to be in like a, honor roll graduation or anything like that but it was like one of those special ones <laughs> that they have yeah. and i got so worked up mm. about something that i just walked off the stage mm. and left the building yeah, and like just panic attack or yeah anxiety just attack anxiety thing. attack about I, I think i remember what it was it's not here nor there for the conversation mm. today but i remember it just being so overwhelmed mm. with it and that feeling of just like hopeless helplessness that i just had to leave like yeah. i i literally walked out of you know uh, one 
I mean, once in a lifetime moment. Yeah. Not that, I don't, clearly, it didn't mean that much to me because I still don't remember what, you what can't I was relive, doing there. You can't yeah. relive that moment. Yeah, I can't it? go back right. and do it again. No. And so, one of the verses that I, like, I, I, to this day, I call it my favorite verse because I use it all the time. And I had to, like, I really thought about getting it, um, like, tattooed on me at one point. But I'm like, do it. I, uh, I'll learn from learn from that Bible verse, and I'm, I've kind of like, I've, I've. Not that I've done it, but like I have that Bible verse in my brain, and it's my it's my favorite Bible verse. So I don't know if you want me to go yeah, ahead. Yeah, what share. is it? Um, it is Matthew six thirty four, and okay. I have it underlined and I have it like starred and like highlighted in my Bible. <laughs> All the Bibles in your house have it. Any like, Bible yeah. that I get, it's the first one I go and underline just because it's my favorite verse and it's got me through a lot yep. in my life. Um, so it is Matthew uh, six thirty four, and it says, "So don't worry about tomorrow." For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Mm. Yeah. And that's Bible verse. I mean, every time in my life where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous about what's <laughs> going to happen in the future. God's like, hey, w- look look at today. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm going to take care of your tomorrow. Worry about today. Do what you need to get done today. And the rest of it, I'm going to I'm gonna take care of it for you. That's Yeah, I like that. That's yeah. good. Yeah, handle your business now because tomorrow ain't guaranteed either. <laughs> exactly. 100%. It's like, yeah, yeah you might, why are you worried about this? Might not even ever come happen, not even happen or whatever. Like, I'm going to take care of it. So, yeah. But he does say it, it, it does say like today's trouble is enough for today. So, like, when you get up in the morning, he allows you, even though you shouldn't, you can worry about what you need to worry about today. Mm-hmm. Get your list of things you need to accomplish. You get up, you worry about them, you take care of them. And then tomorrow, you do it again. So, don't, don't have that worry about the future. Yeah. So, uh, in the book of Philippians, which if you're at that church, we're actually going to be studying Philippians for community groups. Um, but the book of Philippians, chapter four, is a lot to do with um, anxiety and with overcoming today's problems today and dealing with things like that. There's two verses that stand out in Philippians four. One, everybody and their brother is hurt heard at some point in their life which is philippians 4 13 i can do all things through christ who strengthens me everybody knows that one yeah um but i think one that's even more powerful um uh, maybe i don't know if that's probably bad to say but not more powerful but more applicable on a daily basis for a lot of people is 4 6 which is do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god <laughs> They work in tandem here in this chapter. I mean, this is Paul. He's talking to the church at Philippi, and he's telling them one, like, hey, your your business is about today. Hand your business today. Today may feel unovercomable. Mm -hmm. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. um, By prayer and supplication, give thanksgiving. And thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. He's telling them, hey, uh, talk to God. Mm -hmm. Give those things up to God. what, What you're struggling with, this sounds so simple, and it sounds so menial but as guys when we're going through our daily life we just skip this part yep. we're like oh we got to figure it out we got to handle it we can't handle everything on our own the 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 male idea that we're going to just do it and we're going to bull ahead through it is just silly yep. and it's stupid at times yep. but give those things to god but then he goes further and he tells us how to give them to him he says with supplication specifically tell him what's going on have this conversation with god about the the specific issues you're dealing with on that day i don't care how big or how small specifically give those things up to him but do it with a a spirit of thanksgiving you're thankful to god for the fact that he can overcome these things that you're dealing with on this daily basis give those things up to him and then goes on i mean paul here he's he's talking to him and he's like hey i appreciate y'all like Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for high fives and yep. care packages and <laughs> prayers yep. and thanks. And then he goes, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's like strength, yeah. high fives. Thanks, guys, for yep. all you've done. But like God's got this. I don't need you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. God's got this. And then goes back in to tell him how thankful he is again. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's just a, it's a powerful chapter for anxiety. Yep. Um, the whole book of Philippians is great, but the, this chapter specifically really does tackle this idea of like giving things up to God, um, allowing him to run and rule your life yeah. and not try to overpower and overcome on your own. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of an, so in the old Testament, new Testament, Jesus talks a lot about having idols and things that you worship. Yeah. And if you are always worried about things that you can control and you try to take everything and you try to hold everything in, I feel like that's kind of an idol. And uh, mm. you're kind of saying, I'm going to control everything. You know, I don't have to worry about God. God's not going to take care of me. And you know, God doesn't like that. He wants you to be able to dep- depend on him. And so if you have everything held in, like I'm, I'm going to control my finances, I'm going to control my health, I'm going to control my family and everything that happens in it. And God's like, oh, you, th- you think you got everything? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
no, you don't actually have everything yeah. because I'll show you some stuff that you don't have taken care of. So I was like, if you, if you think that you can handle everything that's going on in your life and you don't have, you don't have to worry about Jesus. You don't have to worry about depending on him. God's going to show you like, I think you're wrong. So is anxiety <laughs> at times a, a physical mental response to a selfish pride endeavor or I think shame so. or pride or, mm-hmm. You know whatever these things yep. are, I'm thinking of you again. The context of control, yes. Pride would be right. The the selfish ambition 100%. and the yeah. selfish emotion. I think so. In context of like our series on sex, mm-hmm. shame would probably take over yep. the fact of, and I 100 percent believe that that shame is a a human emotion that we exhibit because we can't fathom the fact that mm-hmm. that we need to give these things up to God. Yep. In the first place, so yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, so uh, I was actually deployed um, at one point, 2016, and uh, being over there, kind of. I mean, that's just a recipe for being anxious and worried. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I got to a point over there where I was like super anxious and super nervous, and all of a sudden I'm like, why am I holding on? Why am I carrying all of this anxiety and all of these worries when I can just give it to God and let God's going to handle it. He's going to get me through this. I'm not going to worry about my safety because God's going to handle it. And I feel like at that point on, I just had way more peace when I just gave it over and said, I'm not going to hold it and say that I can keep myself safe because I don't know if I can keep myself yeah. safe. I really have How no can idea. You know in that? Exactly. So at, at that point in my life, I was just like, I need to give it to God and let him handle it. And he did. And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here today because yeah. you know, he, he took care of me. And if you weren't sitting here today, it would have been, <laughs> I mean, this is the, the other side of that coin yeah, though, sure. is that yeah. it would have been in his will for some reason. Amen. Uh, yes. Romans eight twenty eight. 28, uh, all, all things are, all things are for the good for it. those yeah. who have, uh, all things are work for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. purpose. Yeah. Again, <laughs> the, pull that out of his pocket. It would not be an episode of the point man podcast. If we, if we could not remember. It. Amen. Yeah, that's kind of our thing. <laughs> but we brought that back. Um, <laughs> But we were able to get through that. But yeah, Romans eight twenty eight. Uh, I just lost it again. What is it? <laughs> and all things. And all things work for the good of those. All who things are, work for the good of those who are, love Him and are called according, according to His purpose. purpose. Yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah. that's yeah. sad. We should probably take a break on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back in just a second. Right. We dive into this a little deeper. <laughs> Hey guys, so we have something really cool coming up in the first three Sundays in October and the first three Sundays in November. We are going through our next rounds of Pillars Training. What Pillars is, is a three Sunday, one hour a Sunday study where we dive into the three pillars that make up what it means to be a point man. Those pillars are king, prophet, and priest. King is the ruler of his household. He's the leader of his domain. He rules with dignity and respect. The prophet is the life giver. It's it's the one who people can come to for points of faith. The guy around the water cooler who can speak intelligently on faith and answer questions that people may have whenever they come up to them. Last is the priest. The priest is the caregiver, the, the one who's willing to pray for, to, to, to serve, and to give of their time and of themselves to, to raise up their children, to, to serve their communities, to be a, a light for the people that they come in contact with. We're going through a three week study of these three pillars through the book of Daniel. And it's something that you're gonna to wanna to be a part of. If you're in central Arkansas, you can head over to our Facebook page and sign up today. That's that.church point man point space man on facebook and you can sign up for the next pillars training it'll be here at that church in sherwood it's going to be an incredible study i hope you will come join us we'll see you then <laughs> and we're back so romans eight twenty eight, and we know that and i still screwed it up we know that <laughs> for those who love god all things work together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose dang that's good yeah for those called according to his purpose, yes, not for all people. Yes, correct. And uh, for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. <laughs> I heard that, heard a message about that same verse this uh, maybe last month or something, but it talks about like in this situation that I'm in, it's not good at the moment. You're thinking it's not good, and so God's saying, "Well, it's not over yet." Yeah. Because if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're following the will of God. This situation you're in, maybe not good, but eventually. He's going to make it make it better for you because you're called according to his purpose and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. This verse, I don't know <laughs> why, but for like a month, mm. it came up every day. Yep. Like I was listening to people teach. They would talk about it. I'd come to mm. church. Somebody would say it. Mm. Uh, so there was like a, a post by the church. They were asking people mm. to give their 
favorite Bible verse, and it was like a they were giving something away that had all of the church's favorite Bible verses written on it or something. I don't know what it was. Um, and it was like half of the people, <laughs> it seemed like, the day I looked, like that were Romans 8, 28. I don't know. It's powerful, and it's, you know, when it's read correctly. No. Um, it's... <laughs> Awesome for guys who are dealing with. It's a tough for us to read around here. I mean, yeah. it's probably easier readers. in your Bible. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you can read, then you can do it. Yeah, I'm looking at the words, and I am blind. Um, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for the good for those who are called according to His purpose. I do want to get it right because yeah, it is sure. important. Yeah. Um, but it is. I think it's a cool verse, and I think it's one that um, I, it, it's kind of like the I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. It's like one of those verses that I think we water down because we just see it so much yeah. and we put it on stuff and we hear it. But yeah. you know, when we've been talking about anxiety, we've been talking about guys dealing with things that they can't control or yeah. um, dealing with the anxiety that comes from the pride and the shame and those things that they are going in the storms of life that they're going through now and all of those things this verse for a believer is so um it's freeing because we one we understand even mortality we understand what happens when we die yep. so if you can go to this verse with that understanding as a believer god's doing it for a reason yeah and so you want to talk about storms yeah there is a uh, a chapter or story in the bible where um, is, I believe is in <laughs> that was perfect timing for a, for a we've drum. Been, we've been trying to use that for a while, so there you guys go. That was a terrible transition. <laughs> so. It is in John 11, and it is verses 32 through 43. I'm not going to read them uh, because then we'll jack it up, but um, go back and read it yourself. But uh, kind of get the synopsis is the story um, where the disciples in, are trying to cross the Sea of Galilee, I believe. And uh, Jesus is sleeping in the bottom of the boat, mm -hmm. and they're going through and having that storm. A lot of times you'll hear preachers preach about this when they're talking about anxiety. But, and then God came out and quieted the storm. Yeah. You know, it was really bad. And the disciples were all freaking out, like, we're all going to die and everything. They're, like, really nervous and scared. And Jesus comes out, and he quiets the storm. And they'll preach about, like, oh, man, you just got to trust God. He'll come out, and he'll quiet the storm in your life, which he will, mm -hmm. yes. But I believe the main point people are missing in that story is that when after Jesus came out and he quieted the storm, he was mad. Yeah, he was actually like pretty mad at disciples for not having that faith because they were all so nervous and scared that they were going to die in the storm, and they knew they had Jesus in the bottom of the boat that he was going to protect them. And That's I feel cool. like even in our lives today, <laughs> going through a horrible storm, and we're thinking we're going to die or capsize or your finances are going to go crap or you know whatever else is happening in your life, bad storm you're going through, and Jesus is like. He's mad at us mm -hmm. for that happening in our lives when he's like, I'm going to take care of you. Stop worrying. Stop freaking out. Yeah. And that's like, it's just a great point for that story. I will say, can I, I want to add one thing to sure. that. So like, yes, will, will, will <laughs> Jesus and God move in your yep. life and these things? Yes. There is self, not reliance. That's mm -hmm. not the word I'm looking for. Yep. Um, but there is a, a part mm -hmm. of when we make decisions, yep. we have to make the right decisions. Yeah, for sure. So like, you can't just run this train in the ground and be like, <laughs> okay, you yeah, got it, God. No, for like, sure. yeah, yeah, you know, like I, I know that for the last yeah. 20 years, I've destroyed my finances. Yep. I've slept with everybody. and Yeah, but these guys, they were on mission for Jesus. Right. They were with Jesus. Yeah, yeah. They were in his will on the path that they were supposed to. Yes, they ran into a little storm, but like they weren't off partying or, you know, doing drugs or whatever else yeah. that you could be doing in their lives they were following jesus and then they still were like terrified even though they had jesus in their boat and jesus is like what the heck are you guys doing yeah. up there like why are you guys freaking out but yeah no, same I think thing, that's good same thing happens to me in my life some crap will be going down in my life and i'm like golly i'm, I'm nervous i'm scared i'm, I'm terrified mm -hmm. jesus in the bottom of the boat he's he's ready to come out help me out so yeah I, we were talking about um cessationism versus uh, continuationism mm -hmm. yeah. um I don't know. It's the like movement of the spirit. <laughs> okay. So like uh, some people believe that like healing and those types of things, uh, yeah. speaking in oh, tongues, yeah. right. like those things ended uh, in Paul's day. Mm. That's cessationism. Yeah. And then continuationism is that those things still occur today. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, this is not a theological, you should believe this, but yeah. if, if you, the argument for cessationism today and while we don't see it as frequently here in America would be that we can rely on ourselves to overcome the small things. Yeah. So if we need some food, we can go get a job and go to the grocery store and get food. Sure. But if you're in a country where that's not an option for you and you're reliant on something else or someone else to help you, yeah. then that's why you see these like 
very seemingly spirit filled moments happen in these other countries mm-hmm. uh, because they're open to someone else having a, um, a, a an impact on their life mm-hmm. versus here when well, that still happens at times yeah. but it's like you know like we we can handle some of these things on sure. our own and the, there is cases in the where you hear like oh I, I, I prayed about this person in the hospital stage four or whatever and then all of a sudden people are praying for them yeah. all the church is praying for them they'll magically heal so i mean it does happen to this day it does say in the new testament as well that the elders in the church will come lay hands on you and pray for you it's it, it, it can cause you know extreme um spiritual healing and it, it can happen not, not like i've seen it personally happen mm-hmm. um, but that's not nothing that we did it's because of the that power and and that energy came from you know God. Yeah, and I'm just looking at it from the standpoint of like, we we are not open a lot of times to understanding and trusting God to to save no. or to work right. in some of these moments because we feel like we can overcome little things. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't have to rely on someone for everything. And some people do, and I think that they see more movement because they're more open to the Spirit moving in their life. When you're talking about like, uh, I don't know, like you having a, a car issue, yeah. it's like you you you're gonna think I gotta call the mechanic. Like you're not gonna mm-hmm. stop and be like, pray on it. Yeah. yeah, put your hand on it. <laughs> we were talking about the Jesus yeah, revolution, Jesus, exactly. <laughs> and I thought that point I was like, yeah. Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> the whole the like hippies are around the car and they're hand laying on. hands on the car to pray to the star. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great movie by the way. It is a good movie. <laughs> if you want to go see a good Christian movie? That's a good one. That is good. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think that's interesting when we when we look at it like that. All right, you've got a list of verses. I have a couple of verses. Yes, I've, well, I've, we'll say stories or books, <laughs> books even yeah. books, even yeah. So let's walk through sure. the um, the top your top okay. scripture books, sure. chapters, whatever it is you've got okay. um, dealing with anxiety All right, so and I'm, why you think they're the. So the first one that I already mentioned was that uh, Matthew six thirty four, my favorite verse. Good one. It's just an antidote. I feel like it's like have an anaphylactic shock and you get a pen, EpiPen. Matthew six, yeah. six thirty four. Boom. Put it's it like, in your thigh. Don't worry about tomorrow. I'm good. And you're like, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. I'm not gonna yeah. die right now. So good one. Uh, Matthew six twenty seven. Uh, Jesus is speaking here. He says, "Can all your worries add a single moment to your life?" Um, I feel like that's an, another good one um, to go, go on. Yeah. And if anything, it's going to take from your life. Exactly. It's not going to add to your yeah. life. <laughs> there's, n- there's no time in the hospital where like, man, you need to be a little bit more anxious. You might live a little longer, stress yourself out, get your blood pressure up. You're going to, you know, really good for your heart. That doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. They're always like do yoga or lose some mm-hmm. weight or meditate or whatever. But like the same thing is like relying on God's kind of all those things in one where you take a breath, you know, yeah. relax. But um, good one to have as well. Um, so... I heard uh, Pastor Craig Rochelle um, have these three points. This is not, I mean, it's on the Bible, but there's only three things that can happen when you worry. Um, there's three outcomes that are going to happen when you worry. The first one would be 90% of the time, things you don't worry about will not happen. Yeah. 90% of the time. He did like a poll or whatever. He quoted from a poll that people were over the month, over the three months, they were things that they were worried about, wrote it down, and 90% of the things that did not happen oh, that people were most yeah. worried about. Second thing is it will happen, but it won't be nearly as bad as you think it will. Yeah. And you're worried about like, okay, yeah, it might happen. Your roof might cave in your house, but it's like a little piece. And then somebody is like, hey, I'm a roofer. Come out and fix it. You know, it's like not just not saying that, but I'm just saying like it, it never is as bad as you think it's going right. to be. And then the third option it will happen and it will be as bad as you think it's going to be. But, <laughs> but He's like, give, I'm going to give you a little bit of help, <laughs> hope here and then I'm going to crush you. And then, so the, it will happen, but God will be with you. Mm. Like he says in the Bible, I'm going to be with you and he's going to get you through it. So out of those three options, I'm like, okay, like why am I worrying about this? 9% of the time it's not going to happen Two, It won't be as bad as I think, or three, it's going to happen or be worse, but God's going to be with you and he's going to get you through it. Yeah. Okay. That was a little bit of, I got off topic, but okay. So the, my other one um, would be just the book of Ecclesiastes, <laughs> <laughs> the, whole, the whole book. So uh, if you don't know the Solomon wrote uh, Ecclesiastes okay. and he was the wisest man who ever lived. Um, he asked, um, he was the king of Israel and he, God said, I'm going to grant you one thing. Whatever you ask for, I'm going to give it to you because he was just a good Christian, godly man. And he could have asked for money. He could ask for riches. He could ask for, you know, women or power or whatever. And he said, I want wisdom to be able to take care of your people. 
And so God blessed them with not only wisdom, but he blessed them with money, riches, fame, everything else after that. Um, all that to say is he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. And you're like, oh, man, he's got so much wisdom <laughs> that's going to be in this book. But it's kind of depressing for people who have ever read the book. And if you haven't, I would say if you're not in a good mental state, don't read the book <laughs> at the moment because uh, the main point is life is pointless. It's a whisper. Mm. It's a vapor is what it actually says. But um, for me, it's a very, like, uh, relaxing book whenever I read it because it's saying, like, why am I, why am I worried about it? It's all really not that important in the long run. So for me, it's stressful. Mm, that's good. It's, it's relieving for me. Yeah. So. I really enjoy that, but I think that's all my uh, all my all my points. If there any of those that you want to dive into, we can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Life is pointless, <laughs> and that makes Luke, yep. Luke good feel job. good. <laughs> See you later. Sign out. No, I'm just yeah. Makes me feel better. Isn't that uh, narcissism? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know where it comes from. Yeah, I, I would say it's like I don't, I don't know. It's like for me, it's like I could be every day. I could get up and like stress about whatever things I need to get done, or like worried about things that i need to worry about it's like in the end you know just chill relax eat and it says uh, to eat and enjoy your lot in life so like eat and drink and enjoy your lot in life so that's kind of things that it's like back in my mind it's like just let's just chill let's hang out mm. not let not my blood pressure get high just because i'm worried about something that might not even happen yeah i think for men uh, a couple of things we can can look at as uh like takeaway points here yeah. one uh guys the you could be the biggest baddest strongest meanest dude in the room something's gonna slap you in the face <laughs> you gotta have to have somewhere to go uh for for those of us who have a relationship with jesus and believe in him we're gonna turn to him in these times when we have nowhere else to go um, you're gonna have a loved one become ill you're going to have a financial setback you're going to have something at work not work out there's going to be a stress of life that hits a storm you're gonna go through you have to know where to turn. Yep. You can't always rely on your overpowering strength and ability to, to get you through things. It just doesn't work like that. Nope. Um, second is you, if you're dealing with things of, that make you anxious now, there's a there's probably a root issue at play. Um, if it's something that's like long term and something that's not just like, gosh, dang it, the truck is not working mm -hmm. today. Like, mm -hmm. Get, find a, a counselor. Um, we uh, I, For a long time, I was like not on the counseling train, if I'm just being transparent mm -hmm. for a second. The more we go through these hard conversations and the more we go through conversations like uh, a real conversation about sex, the more it is clear that guys need to go and speak to somebody. Um, and I say I wasn't on the train, not because I didn't think it was helpful for people. I just... I don't know. It wasn't like a over macho thing or manly thing. It's just, but it, it's so important. Uh, Pastor Eddie laid it out perfectly with the guy who is struggling with the anxiety of, of coming forward with the fact he struggled with porn. Yeah. And it was that, you know, this is a place where you can design, develop the plan to attack this thing that you're dealing with. Um, it's a, it's not a place where you hide from your sin. It's not a place where you hide from your anxiety, but it's a place where you get to, to air it and to develop the plan to attack it. So if you're struggling with something that's causing anxiety in your life, that's the first place to start. If it is a sexual sin, Paul tells us to run because no sin affects somebody like this one does. The reason for that is to get away from it, develop the plan in a safe area where you can go back and attack the issue. If it's not that, and if it's something else, the same principles apply. You've got to find a place where you can get with somebody develop that plan and move forward um and i would say too uh the third thing on this is the this is the value of men's ministry and point man and for community groups that are coming up and for all the things this is a group of guys this isn't a group of saints this isn't a group of geniuses or whatever it's a group of, of dudes of men who are coming together because they're all seeking the same thing if they weren't seeking jesus a relationship with him moving forward and developing their relationship with him they wouldn't come yep. they wouldn't be there they'd go do something else with their wednesday night that's why it's important to become involved with uh, with point man and with men's ministry in general it's it i say this and i was going to say it every time because it's so important it's the most important room in the church because where men go people follow 
king, prophet, priest for a reason. You're the leader, you're the life giver, and you're the caretaker of, of society, essentially, as a man. That's your burden and your lot in life. It, get used to it because it's not going to change. But it is for every man in that room. And so the ability to come together and to, to build a community that can attack these things with you, walk through these things with you, support you through the struggles that you're going through, um, that's a very tactical way, a very real way every day that someone can can be pouring in and helping you walk through these things you've got to be in your bible you've got to be in prayer you've got to be studying and and philippians 4 6 it's uh like i'm not no <laughs> not going to um, do not be anxious about anything but in everything with by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to god it, you gotta be talking to yeah him. so on your second point that you brought up you talked about like having a counselor or using a counselor yeah. and i think that is amazing great advice because i like every time in your life you need to have somebody that you can call and you need to have people who can call you because like you said, getting punched in the mouth by life. It, it's going to it eventually. Yeah. And it's happened to me before. And um, so I've, um, at one point in my life, I was getting out of active duty and I was thinking about joining the air national guard. And I was like, I had a day to decide because of the way that it happened. I was like, I'm going to reenlist. I'm going to reenlist. Something happened. And uh, somebody's peeling somebody out in the parking is lot. having a peeling out in the parking lot. Are they just doing donuts in the parking lot? <laughs> what's up? What's up, Sherwood? <laughs> it's probably a, you know. Oh, in a Mazda. In a, like a Mazda SUV. <laughs> what the heck? Sorry. This has nothing to do with the episode, but I can just see it out the door. <laughs> just doing burnouts? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Tom, come on. Get on the podcast. <laughs> anyway. They ain't worried about nothing. What? No, they ain't stressed. <laughs> they don't need this podcast. <laughs> Where was that? Where was I talking? Okay. <laughs> so having somebody you can call, right? So <laughs> Who are you gonna call? When I when I was get when I was getting active duty, I had a day to decide. I'm yeah. either gonna join the guard or I'm gonna realize I need to decide that day. And I feel like I got popped <laughs> in yeah. the mouth. And I had extreme anxiety and so I was like, I didn't have somebody I need to call. I'm gonna call my dad and say, Hey, what do you think I should do in this situation? He's like, you know, what's God telling you? You need to pray right now. And pray with me. And, and in the long run, as long as you pray first before you make a decision, this is a different podcast, but pray before you make a big decision in life. And God's going to tell you and he's going to show you which way you need to take. <laughs> even in the moment where it doesn't sound They're like bad. it. <laughs> even in the moment where it doesn't sound like it's going to happen, God's going to take care of it. But... Uh, <laughs> Going We're going to take a so. quick break All and right. see what's going on. Be we'll right be right back. back. <laughs> All right, so we had to take an impromptu break because Tokyo Drift uh, Sherwood Edition decided to, <laughs> to take on the parking lot of the church here just a second ago. <laughs> Someone in a sweet Mazda. I don't know what the SUV is for Mazda. But they decided that uh, they needed some burnout therapy in the parking lot today. Uh, yeah, they didn't listen to the pod because they got some stressors they got, yeah. they're getting off their chest right now. That's how good that sermon was this morning. They said, <laughs> they said to let them know. Yeah, to get, I got to get to the church parking lot because I got to burn this <laughs> Mazda out. What the heck? Anyway. So, uh, Enterprise, North Little Rock, Arkansas. Yeah. Uh, you got a point. You got yeah. one coming back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, back to we were talking about anxiety and getting punched <laughs> in the mouth. Um, so, like I was saying, at one point in my life, I need to decide in one day if I need to get out of active duty and join the guard or yeah. if I need to reenlist. And so, you need to have that person you need to call and you need to have be a person that people can call. Because we're all going to go through it at some point in our lives. You need to have somebody called to get yeah. advice from or tell you, like, listen to God or have somebody you need to give advice to because it's going to happen to everybody. You're going to break down. Like you were saying, you get punched in the mouth. So I got punched in the mouth. I called my dad, and he was, like, prayed with me and kind of, like, talked me off the ledge because I was like, I'm, I'm losing. I don't know if I need to, what I need to do. He kind of gave me that peace with a prayer to say, hey, I think you need to do this decision, make decision. And looking back on it, it was ex extremely good advice. And um, – I think that if someone called me and they were freaking out and they were having issues, I could, 
you know, kind of pray with them, kind of do this exact same thing that I was able to get to me. So good, really good advice about having an, a counselor and or a person that yeah. that's going to give you good godly advice. A, a biblical counselor yes. to start with, right? right? Here's the deal about biblical counselors. If the, if you have deeper needs that they need, can't address, they'll get you to someone who can address them. Yep. But start there because they got this. <laughs> yep. And that's they're using the sword of, of, of truth. Yep. Uh, first, so start with them, uh, and then they'll trans- transition you if needed yeah. to a, a different type of counselor. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, having that community of people um, around you is super important. Yep. I remember, so w- I had a daughter who passed away, and she the night that we found out that she had cancer, it was the 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 community of believers that we had in our life from the church who came to the hospital. Yep. Um, it wasn't you know our our secular friends it wasn't the the people who we had known longest um in fact we really hadn't known them that long yeah. but they were the ones who came late at night to the hospital and were there and were praying and talking and communicating with us and were a part of that moment um of that was could have been full of yeah. deep anxiety and it was full of sadness yeah. and all of the issues that deal with when your kid has cancer yeah. but um but it was the the community of believers who rallied and yep. came and i just like with a biblical counselor versus a secular one they, they'll get you to the place you need to go if you're counseling wise but community you know we look at all we look at these verses like uh, romans eight twenty eight. it's for those who love him and are called according to his purpose it's not everybody i mean as, as people are we all created equal yes is god's grace equal to us scripture would say no no and i i can't imagine um what what you guys were going through in that season i, I was around during the church during that time and just looking back on you guys last night like, man you, you guys are really really strong and i'm sure you guys were dealing with extreme anxiety and extreme um sadness um in that moment in your life so i was just going to ask like you know what what got you guys what, what what was the one of some of the keys that got you guys through that during that point in your life? Mm-hmm. yeah having a a solid church community okay. um and people who were willing to invest time and energy nice. and come and and be a part of that pain yeah. honestly right. um and take on some of that burden that's going on is, is super helpful um being people of faith yeah. uh, maybe not the greatest examples of it at times but knowing yeah. that we have a relationship with jesus being able to to go to him in those times of need um uh, was important but it, it that community is what it truly invite like we had a party this sounds really sad, stupid but we honestly had like a a party the night she passed away not yeah. in the sense of like everybody yeah, was right. excited yeah, but right, like right. We were comforted by the fact that we had these people to that were with us in that moment. We knew where she was. Yeah, right. We weren't worried about it anymore. She'd gone on. Yeah, like right. you know, it's, we're sad because she's not here. But like, I mean, at that point, it's like, oh, good. Like, <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> you're she, you're doing better than we are. Oh, and so, us, for sure. So yeah. you know, that's uh, having those people around you is is so important, and and people that understand that mm-hmm. aspect of it too. Yeah. From the outside looking in, that looks super weird. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny we had a neighbor, so she passed away in COVID. Like. When I say in COVID, I mean like yeah, right. the world shut down two right. days after she passed away. <laughs> like yeah. in the, right. when yeah, the yeah. height of everybody freaking the heck out, <laughs> she passed away. Yeah. And so um, all these people come to our house and I, she passes away. And uh, uh, the reason we had a party is because it was my birthday. <laughs> Two, on top yeah. of that. Right. Uh, my neighbor across yeah. the street. Yeah. And he's like, y'all name all those people at their house. He was talking to my father-in-law who lives next door. Yeah. He was like, well, their daughter died. That man's never talked to me again. Oh, gosh. oh Lord. <laughs> Which is great because yeah. I don't really get along with him. But <laughs> yeah, I mean. But yeah, having that large, I mean, enough people to make this man uncomfortable that they were at our house. Yeah. <laughs> he right. wasn't even there. Yeah. I mean, a large group of people who believed uh the same thing we did believe she was in the same place that we did yep. to to know what god's word says right. and to be willing to invest in in, in that time yep. um those people also don't come mm. if you're not putting in the time and effort to mm. to make those relationships That's awesome yeah. they don't know to be there right um if you're not diligent with being around people of faith when tragedy strikes mm. the church is there for you yep. the church is there to help right but that next level of community doesn't exist if you don't invest the time and energy on the front end yeah. but they will be there mm-hmm. if you've spent the time to make those friends to make those connections and it's uncomfortable yeah. um 
Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, I was just going to say that um, talked about in the New Testament where Jesus says, either build your house on a foundation that's strong or you build your house on a foundation of sand or, you know, loose dirt mm-hmm. or whatever. And he said the storms of life are going to come. They're going to smack your house. But if your house is built on a solid foundation, you have the biblical knowledge, you have the biblical family, you have um, the relationships that you need, it's strong. You can withstand those storms. Yep. And then people, I feel, I feel really bad if I have like a lot of sorrow for the people who build the foundation on the sand or like you know their relationships are not godly or world they're worldly and as soon as that storm comes it blows them and knocks their life smooth to the ground and yep. you know, I, I really i don't like i don't have like it doesn't make you happy it doesn't make you like you know have good feelings that their house their life got completely washed off it actually makes you really sad and you know, wish that they it was it was different than what they're going through so, yeah, yeah it is you know and it's uh when you talk about building a cornerstone it's yeah. it, it's simple way to say, say yes to Jesus, <laughs> yep. like right. it, relationships, say yes to Jesus, like all of these things. Yep. It's, it, in, it's going to be uncomfortable yep. at first. Like sure. you're going to walk into rooms where you know no one and it's going to be awkward. Mm-hmm. Um, man up a little bit. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. it, it, it's the burden of us as, as, as ministry uh, leaders to, to, find a way that you feel comfortable when you come in but the other side of that is like golly man like you need to be here you're supposed to be here this is for you Mm. so man up you if you wanted to go hunting you're not going to feel bad about walking into the hunter's expo and you know nobody there you want to be there or the car show you know nobody there or the ball game you don't know those hundred thousand people in the ball (laughs) no but you got to cohesive you know force that's pulling you into that stadium with one another you don't feel awkward there no you do not yeah then why feel awkward when you walk into a room of dudes who i mean essentially it's a football stadium for jesus like (laughs) that's why we're we're there expressing our worship of 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 our lord and savior Mm -hmm. it's we're there expressing this relationship we have Mm -hmm. with them this you know community uh, effect of, of 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 chasing after him and to looking to him for guidance and I mean, man up yeah. at some point. Like I, we could say it as nicely as we want. We yeah. can make it as as man friendly as yeah. it can be. You yeah. could bring ten friends in, and but like at the end of the day, you need to be there. Yeah. Like you need to walk through the doors. You need to be a part of it. And you're not always going to agree with every decision. You're not always going to like every T-shirt. You're not always going to, you know, whatever it is. And I'm never going to try to make you feel everybody feel comfortable with yeah. everything you like. said like uh it's going to going to a place where you're you're rooting for jesus unlike a football team where the hogs will just let you down every week and then uh, you, but you always win you know when yeah, you're with yeah, jesus, you so, anytime you're yeah, with a group of believers you're yeah, you winning do, yeah exactly you don't you don't there's no chance of losing which is which is awesome and that i i here's a guarantee i'll give you if you're willing to to come and be a part of a group of men who are seeking after jesus who are diving into god's word who who believe this to be true and the word inside of it to be divinely inspired you can't lose nope. I'll, I'll make that guarantee it'll be a win nope. in the end nope. if you stick to it and you're a part of it so man up come in it's worth it um that's anxiety nope. it's something that we all deal with and something we all have the storm of life comes uh, if it's not come yet it'll it's coming soon yeah uh, if it just passed the next one's around the corner uh you're never free of it i mean like you said earlier yeah, I'm, I was like, I still have the anxiety today. Even I kind of preached to myself out here today again. So yeah. it's like, yeah, we yeah. always deal with it. You're going to deal with it. I, I stress about stuff constantly. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not that anyone ever gets over that, but it's it, the, the tools, uh, tools, having the counselor, having the community, having a relationship with Jesus, being rooted in God's word, praying, communicating, supplicating. No, preach. Those things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's awesome, man. Yeah, we got two of them in there today, y'all. Um, but yeah, that's what it's about. So uh, if you're not part of Point Man, you need to be. Yep. Um, you found this, so you can find your way to Woody Sherwood Forest <laughs> or to the next event, whatever yep. it is, as this is wrapping up. Um, but that's what we got for today. Um, it, it, I, my prayer is that, that more men take a step um, to, to, to grow in those communities. I think that's something that's going to be a topic of conversation a lot 
for us because it's something that I, I feel very passionate about um, is that men need to have that community where they can be men and they can be men together seeking after Jesus. Yes. Burn out for Jesus. Yeah. Oh. Burn out in your Mazda MX-5. <laughs> or No, that's a car. This wasn't even a car. This was some crummy SUV. And if you drive a Mazda Jeez. SUV, I'm sorry. It's not a cool SUV. But uh, until next time, I'm Zach. This is Luke. And we will see you later. See you.